going to bring in our guest host for today. He is uh, uh, he's on the chart at number 16 right now with a song called After a Few. Uh, young guy, new country artist. Let's bring in Travis Denning, everyone. Raymond, if you can play his clip as his intro music, that'd be cool. Here he is. Oh, yeah. 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 Look at this guy. Cowboy boots, Came. camouflage hat. Came prepared. Denim jacket. I mean. You get no more country than you, my friend. I know, absolutely. Travis Denning is here. Travis, I was reading about you. We know each other outside of the show, but someone called you, this is a quote, a prolific writer with an unquestionable stage presence. Who called you that exactly? I'm pretty sure that's my dad's blog, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, th- I mean, that's incredible. I mean, that's exactly what... I mean, I kind of want to be known for my songwriting, but I, I mean, I love to play guitar, and I mean, I signed up in country music to be on stage, so when all three of those can kind of go into one, I get fired up. Hey, I read here, it says you have cuts by Aldine, Justin Moore, Michael Ray, and Chase Rice. Does that mean songs that you've written, they ended up recording? Yeah, yeah, those were, especially that Aldine song was one of the earliest songs I ever wrote in Nashville. I wrote it in 2013, and he recorded it, and it was on his uh, They Don't Know record. So, yeah, all those songs were uh, songs I I was kind of writing as I was kind of finding out who I was as a songwriter and an artist, and luckily they kind of fell in love with it too. Travis uh, R. Denning on Instagram. What's R stand for? Rents. R-E-N-T-Z. Interesting. Is that your middle name? That is. It's a family name from my dad's side. Hmm. It's French, so I'm cultured, if you might was wondering. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, Rents with a Z. I got a Z in one of my names. And... Are you still? Are you, you still have a girlfriend? Yes. Okay. Do you know who his girlfriend is, Eddie? Hey, no. Let's play. Let's play. Guess his girlfriend. Okay. Is you she famous? Oh, her dad is. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's play. Is Amy playing too? Do you know Amy? Amy, do you know? I don't know. Okay. So Travis Denning's filling in for lunchbox today. <laughs> we'll do ten yes or no questions and see if you can figure out who her dad this is. Gonna be good. Okay. okay. All right. Um, you can you wrote take turns. Okay, Eddie, okay. you're first. Yeah. Is her dad a country musician? Yes. Okay. Wow. Amy. Was he also on a TV show with his daughter? No. <laughs> no. What What, what were show. you thinking? Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh, oh. Miley. You're dating Damn, Miley Cyrus. Yeah, I'm Miley. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> you nailed it. Second question. <laughs> Boom. Hey, I was just asking. No, the answer is no. Okay. Eddie? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, is Was he around in the 70s? I'm going to say alive, yes. Yeah, but not but, doing country music? <laughs> but not doing country okay. music in the 70s. All right, all right. Amy. Oh, is he on the radio now? Good question, Amy. No. Recurrent. Yeah, it, yeah. like he gets played as oh, a, like like a, a throwback. throwback. Yeah, so no. The answer is no. Eddie? Hmm. This is tough. This is tough. Uh, it's yes or no questions? Uh, okay, okay. Is, is 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 he from Nashville? Like originally from, ten, from Tennessee? No. no. No, but nobody is. Yeah. 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 All right, that's Who's why I from asked. here? That's a unicorn if you're yeah. originally from Nashville. Amy? Is she in the profession? No. No. Yeah, no. Eddie? But that's why I didn't say who she was. That's her, true. Her dad is. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. Four more questions, Eddie. Was he popular in the 90s? Yes. <gasps> All right, oh. now we're getting in there, Amy. We have oh, three left. can I just say his name? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, why are you going to waste a question? <laughs> okay. Well, I was just going to ask, is Go ahead. it? Go ahead. Um, does he wear a cowboy hat? Yeah. Yes. Two left. All right, I'm gonna guess. Well, the, well I just I just shut it. Why don't you guys talk about it at the end? You're, you're a team. You okay. Talk about it at the end. You have two more a- questions. Amy, I'm thinking Alan Jackson. Well, hold on, you have two more questions. I'm, th- I'm talking to Amy. Ask the questions and then deliberate. Say, does he have oh. facial hair? Oh, okay. Yeah. Does he have a mustache? A facial hair. No. A mustache. No. Right. Trans- no, no. No. Clean one, shaven. One clean question shaven. left. Clean shaven. Yeah. Yeah. Smarty pants. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Y'all were pretty dead on, but no, you weren't close at all. He wears a cowboy hat. He's from. Does he? Is he? Uh, dark hair. Does he have dark hair? You can answer or that one. Or blonde. Don't answer or blonde. Just Sorry. say yes or no. <laughs> yeah. Dark hair. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Oh. Okay, maybe it's gray now. Okay. Okay, that's it. Now that talk it. about it, Smarty okay. Pants. He did. He did have gray hair. Amy, so that's like Clint Black. Clint Black is who I thought of. Uh, that's... Garth. Garth, but I don't think he has a daughter available. Excuse Travis me? Denning is here, guest hosting like, for Lunchbox. Is. His girlfriend's dad is a what we've learned is a famous '90s country artist yeah. who wears a cowboy hat. And now you're trying. And to... Garth is on the radio now. Right, right. I think Clint Black's the one. Clint Black, John Michael Montgomery. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of had a reaction when he said that. I know. John I'm Michael stretching. Montgomery. I w- I'm not giving anything away. 
Um, what is your answer? Because if you don't get it right, bring in the cat food. You'll eat this. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, go go with John Michael Montgomery. I don't know. It could be. What is your What is your team answer, Amy? Do it. Okay. Uh, sold. Yeah. <laughs> John Michael Montgomery. <laughs> the answer is Travis Denny's girlfriend is Madison Montgomery. <gasps> <Yeah>! <laughs> Daughter of Clint Black. No, sorry. <laughs> I've seen anyone looking so fine, man. I gotta have her. She's a one of a kind. I'm going once, going twice. I'm so the lady in the second row. She's an eight, she's a nine, she's a ten. I know she's got ruby red lips, blonde hair, blue eyes. And I'm about to bid my heart goodbye. How long have hey, you, you crushed that? Tell him you I know every word. That. Tell that him I said amazing. hey. We told him that he was on our show like five months ago. Who? And you told him, John Michael Montgomery. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> John Michael Montgomery was on here? Yes, oh, yes, he yes, was. yes. Okay. I thought you meant he was on here and he told us he was dating his daughter. And I was like, oh my gosh, we are horrible people. We forgot. But I, I just tell, I want anybody to tell John that. How long have you been dating? Madison? Almost, Madison. almost a year, actually. St. Patrick's Day is technically our anniversary. I mean, I, I don't know if we ever like picked a day and said we're dating now, but we kind of say St. Patrick's Day because we went downtown and drank and then went to Five Points Pizza. Cute. And uh, that was like our first official date. Hmm. Well, congratulations, bud. Thank you. Yeah, Travis also played my Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, it was great. He showed up with a guitar and played <laughs> that songs was for fun. us. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's do the morning corny. Amy has oh. one. And do you have one, Travis? I do have one. All right, it better be good. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the morning corny. What kind of horses do ghosts ride? What kind of horses do ghosts ride? Nightmares. <laughs> Mayor, the horse. Mayor's a horse. Mayor. That was the morning corny. Oh, come on. I don't even have time now. Raymond has <laughs> shut me off from di- being disappointed on jokes. He just plays the clapping. <laughs> you got it, right, Travis? I, I got it, yeah. Okay. Uh, now over it. to Travis Denning with his corny. Here we go. Travis, hit me. The morning corny. Have you guys heard about sleeping in the woods? Mm-mm. It's intense. <laughs> it's intense. It's intense. <laughs> Amy, you didn't even react. <laughs> yeah. I, That's well, rude. I had th- no, You're I so- had to think about it. It was better than What is there to think about? <laughs> intense, Amy. Intense. <laughs> intense. Hey, can we play Travis's song? Intense. Um, Travis. That's good, Travis. Amy Thank didn't you. even react. <laughs> uh, Travis Denning is filling in for Lunchbox. Uh, we're going to play a song after a few, which is at number 16 this week. Is that right? Yes, sir, it is. How does that feel to have a song... Pretty, pretty amazing. I mean, it's, it's nuts. I mean, just to, just all the time and effort put into shows and stuff and doing that, and all of a sudden it pops up on that little page, and then you see it get in the top twenty, and then right outside of the top fifteen, it's great. It's awesome. Does your girlfriend like you more that you have a hit? Is mm-hmm. she starting to be like now? Remind me of my dad. I <laughs> think. Yeah. Did she say that. Oh, she compares oh, you to no, her no. dad. Oh, yeah. I, uh, oh man. That would be she's early. That's early. Hot. I uh, no. I think she's pretty indifferent, which is good. I think that's kind of. Which, what you hope for. Honestly, she may be annoyed by it at this point. Is she a singer? Uh, no, she's not. But she she actually has a phenomenal voice. She's just, she's a student and play. She also tears up the piano, but she would hate that I just told y'all that. But she's a really good piano player. Travis Denning is here. Here is his song, After a Few. Check it out. Stream it. Download it. If he's around, go see him live. Steal it. I don't care as steal long as it. you enjoy it. How do you, how do you steal things? It's like all digital anymore. now. What are you gonna hack an account? Lime hack wire. an account. Yeah. It's a- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Travis Denning's here. Bobby Bone Show. So Travis Denning is filling in for Lunchbox. Who, by the way, not to steal your shine, Travis, but just to let our listeners know who's filling in for the rest of the time. On Monday, Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC will be filling in. Dang. Ooh. Yeah, we're going from down here to up here. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, um, from KTV and Little Rock, one of the news stations, I've got one of the the anchors coming. To Ansley, who I met when I went back to Mountain Pine as she came. So we're just trying to put all cool. different people in the mix here. But it's all down from here, Travis. Oh, I would say it's all up. You gotta sit, you're starting with the lowest expectation, and then it just whew, skyrockets. Where are your parents from? They are uh, from Middle Georgia originally. Uh, they actually live in Washington, D.C. right now, which is pretty cool. Is that right? How'd they get up there? So they've both been uh, civil servants in the Air Force like my whole life. And, um, now that both the kids are out of the house and can pay their own rent, uh, they're up there uh, working out of the Pentagon right now until they retire. Wow. Yeah. What? 
How about that? Dude, they love it. It's awesome. They literally live across the street from the Pentagon. So they walk to work every day. It's just them and Obi, their little dog. And they're, dude, they're living it up. They love D.C. so much. Did you grow up in a military family? Did it feel like that? No, nah, I mean, because, see, they weren't military. Like, they were they were just government employees. So, you know, we lived in, U- I mean, uh, Georgia for pretty much from the time I was born to, like, when I was 10. And then we lived in Utah for, like, five years. And then we came back. But we went to Utah because of my parents' jobs. But Warner Robins, Georgia, is a huge Air Force town. I mean, that, that Air Force base employs, like, 22 or 23,000 people. Oh, wow. And so, that's where you claim as your home. Yeah, Robins. I mean, that, that's truly my home, yeah. You know Big Boss Man? You know who that is? The Big no. Boss Man? The no. wrestler? No. <laughs> He's from Georgia. He's, oh, okay. He's used to, you know, his thing, we come out of the baton and beat people up. Oh, like wrestling? Like wrestling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Old school. Yeah, old school stuff. All right, uh, Travis Denning is here. We're going to do a couple things. Travis has a Tell Me Something Good coming up. Yes. Do? We'll do that. Uh, we'll give you an update about Lunchbox's baby yesterday. Yeah. You guys want to know that? Yes. Uh, we'll come back in just a few minutes here. Bobby Bone Show. Be right back. All right, Travis Denning is here filling in for Lunchbox today. Uh, just a quick note. Lunchbox did have his baby. Tomorrow he will tell us what the gender is. Oh, okay. In perfect Bobby Bone Show fashion, he wants us to <laughs> tease it for a day. And then tomorrow he will tell us what, if it's a boy or a girl. So he's going to call in? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk to him tomorrow. Cool. Eddie, do you know? I do know. Okay. I had to know. I made a bet on it. Oh, yeah, that's so right. I'm like, you tell me right now what it is. It's probably a boy or a girl. Yeah, that was one 50, of the 50. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be good. <laughs> I would bet that. Yeah. Thanks, Travis. Let's do, since Travis is here, let's do a, a Travis Denning tell me something good. Okay. So you know what that is, right? Yes, it's, it's it. like good news, good stuff happening in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Like positivity. Do we want to hit imaging for him? All right, here we go, Travis. Hold on. Hold tight. It's time for the good news. Tell me something good. All right, Travis Denning, what is your tell me something good? My tell me something good is uh, for like the past like 10 days, two weeks, I've officially become an uncle again to two twin girls. My sister had two twin girls, and they are just absolutely awesome. Wow. Uh, Had a perfect birth. Uh, Jane and Jolene are the names. So now Jane, Jolene, and Jameson are my nieces and nephew. And uh, it's been awesome. I got to finally, in my busy schedule, I had about 18 hours uh, to drive down to Georgia uh, after a show and went down. And they're just beautiful and absolutely adorable and healthy and cute. Yeah. And crying all the time. Oh, man, and, congratulations. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As an uncle, it's great. You know, I get to hug them, <laughs> and as soon as they need a diaper change or they cry, they're not mine anymore. You just give them right back. So uh, that's been the fun. Tell me something good in my life. Would you ch- change the diapers if you needed to? Have you ever changed a baby's diaper? I've actually never changed a diaper uh, because, you know, it's just not a priority right now in my life. I don't I don't have one. <laughs> I don't really need to yet. So I haven't taken that crash course yet. But I, if I... If I absolutely had to, like if you had a baby. Oh, if I if I had a baby, yes. <laughs> well, you say that, but Eddie had babies. He didn't change diapers. You didn't yeah. change diapers. Not for my all. first two kids, no. Mm-hmm. No, I would I would change my kid's diaper, but I'm not going to change my <laughs> nephew or niece's diaper. Is this relationship you're now the longest you've ever been in? Yeah. Your girlfriend say, yeah. is almost a year. How old do you think Travis is? He looks like he's about 12, That's what I was right? about to ask. Uh, he 12 said and a half. Girlfriend. Thank and then you very much. No, he drove here. Yeah. He's 16. <laughs> I saw, yeah. And then he slipped in that his girlfriend is in school. And I was like, what school? But to be like, fair, my girlfriend is in school. True. Oh, yeah. That's but what I, I know. Back d- it could be high school. It could yes. be college. It could be grad school. Like, she is what you call a, what do you call someone? Po- post-grad? Like, no, no, no. A uh, un- non-traditional student. Yes. Oh, okay. That would she's be like my girl. She's 28. 28. And yeah. yeah, she has a career. She took, a, she was doing her job for five years somewhere else and then decided to go to school again. So like, how old are you? <laughs> no, get, no, 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 no. You guess. That's the game. Man, you're getting quizzed 20... hard. 24? Man, I appreciate that. 26? Oh, well, no, no. Okay, is she fine, right? 24. Is 24 right? No, 24 is not right. But it's, if it's, you appreciate that, then it has to be way higher. I mean, it's not way higher, but it's just like a little higher. How okay, old are 27. You, Boom. Yeah. Oh, he's 27. Yeah. How old's your girlfriend? She's uh, 23. Okay. Yeah. You know a lot of famous artists that died at 27. Oh, yeah. There's, no. there's a club. Yeah. Thanks. Amy Winehouse. I guess Kurt I'll just Cobain. sleep here until I'm 28 now or I'm safe. <laughs> Jim Morrison. Well, like yeah, but here's the difference. Andrew, you're not that great. 
Yeah, like, exactly. These are real great <laughs> these artists. Are, these <laughs> are true, timeless, like cornerstone people. You got music, a song and at I'm 16, bro. Pump your brakes, <laughs> yeah. all right? Yeah. Got to think in your Kurt Cobain here, Jimi Hendrix. He's like, you know, Kurt Cobain, Jimi Hendrix, I Travis Denny. I'm left handed like them, I guess, you know? Yeah, no, nah, you're right. Don't work. In all my time in Nashville, I've only ever been able to pick up one person's guitar and just play it because I'm left handed. And that person's Travis. Funniest thing that ever, like, I laughed so hard when that happened. Because you kind of tricked me. Oh, I was like, this thing's left-handed? And, like, because like, cause I assume most people <laughs> grab your guitar and they're like, how do you do this? <laughs> and so I did the whole thing. I was like, hey, what well, do you put your... F-? And then I started playing and he's like, for a second, he's like... For about- <laughs> he's like, what amazing. is happening right now? <laughs> he, he, he hit a C chord and I'm like, that, that's kind of a hard chord to try. And then I said, oh, wow, he's, he did it. And then he just walked it on down... <laughs> I mean, my head was blown for about three seconds, and I realized I was... That's one of his old oh, tricks. Oh, yeah. I, I got a lot of those tricks. Yeah, he does that with oranges, got- too. He's like, oh, I've never juggled before. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he, he starts, starts juggling, juggling like a circus act. <laughs> well, what I do is I, like, stumble with them a little bit first, and I'm like, huh. You, like, hustle them a little bit. How do bit. you think yeah, yeah. they juggle? <laughs> And then I'm like, whoa, 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 look at this. <laughs> so dumb. That's amazing. <laughs> mm. Hey, so you're doing a show with Aldine coming up? Yeah, this Friday. Charlottesville, Virginia. Is that a whole... What, what's happening there? How'd you get on that show? So, uh, Riley Green has a... Tomorrow. A, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, I leave tonight. Riley Green is on that tour. A uh, great friend of mine. He had to bail uh, for something he's doing here in town for CRS and uh, Country Radio Seminar. And um, so, the slot was open. Uh, they kind of last minute threw me in. So, I'm just excited to start my one date, one leg tour with Jason Aldean. <laughs> That's, that's got to be awesome. I think that's I'm like do- your, um, oh, I know what this is called. Come on, Amy, you your, got it. Uh, your Mickey nope. Wally. Mantle. Wally. Wally Pip. You got Wally, He's Wally Pipped right now. Exactly. I mean, you have a time to shine. Do you know who Wally Pip is? It, I'm assuming baseball. Yeah, yeah, so he got thrown in to pinch, do something. Mm-hmm. Run, I'm totally hit. messing this story up. Well, tell it, Bobby. <laughs> well, you're using the reference. Go ahead. Well, I couldn't remember the reference, but I was proud of myself. So you for pinched even him, and then like, what else? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like Rudy. He like was Rudy. no. Well, I yeah. What I happened know. was yeah. Tell him. Old Wally was the first baseman for the Yankees. He got hurt. Lou Gehrig goes in to fill in. And then he keeps his job. Wally Pip never was back because Lou Gehrig just crushed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so your buddy your, Riley Green's Riley Green Wally could Pippen. be, you could Wally Pip him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, am I Lou Gehrig? Yeah, yes. you're Lou Gehrig, bro. Watch yes. out, Riley. Yeah. yeah. And Watch then out. next thing you know, Jason Aldean's like, you know what? He's Screw like, this, Riley. I think I'm going to have you out. He's like, dude, he's like, he is just so much better, talented, prettier, everything over Riley. So we're going to keep him out. Do you think you'll have a lot of memories from this tour? I mean, I think <laughs> I think <laughs> it's just going to be such a huge learning. The, the amount of things I'm going to learn mm-hmm. in a matter of hours uh, Ooh, I wonder, will last a lifetime. I wonder if Jason Aldino will get you a tour gift. Mm, should I prank him? Should I do like an end of tour prank? Yeah. You should get him an end of tour gift. <laughs> uh, don't tell him. Just throw water <laughs> in like, his face. Thank you for... <laughs> What, 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 run, out, run out in a mascot uniform on stage. And he's what, like, what is what is an end of tour gift on one day? It's like one beer. It's like, here. <laughs> it's Thanks for having me out. Uh, Travis Denning is here filling in for Lunchbox. Any artists that you look up to? Like anyone that you let, like serve as a mentor-ish kind of person? Uh, actually, Justin Moore is probably the first one that comes to mind. I've known Justin for forever. We share a producer, and uh, he cut two of my songs, um, uh, Life in the Living and Pick Up Lines. And he's just... A guy that throughout my whole career I've kind of been able to talk to and, and bounce things off of. And his advice is always something that, that I take, you know, pretty close to heart. Uh, growing up in middle Georgia, actually, I mean, Jason Aldean w- w- is from Macon, Georgia, which is about 20 miles north of my hometown. So even just off of a geographical standpoint, you know, I remember seeing him sell out the Macon Coliseum growing up and just thinking, dude, if, like, somebody – from the same neck of the woods as me did it, then, like, it, it was such a big motivation to be like, okay, yeah, like, I can go give it a shot. I mean, somebody from this area did it, too. So, definitely Al Dean, you know, pretty much all through high school and even after just because he gave me hope and motivation. Speaking of that, let's talk politics. Okay, no, okay. Stop. <laughs> all right, here's Marin Morris, The Bones, Bobby Bones Show. If you guys want to hop on, Travis is here. You can talk to him, too. 877-77-BOBBY. 877-77-BOBBY. Getting texts here about Travis Denning, who is guest hosting for Lunchbox. Uh, It says, I'll be three white claws in singing his song, David Ashley Parker from Powder Springs. 
And so this is from a 931 area code. Hey, play me a clip of that song, Ray, please. Here you go. Daily Chicago from Powder Springs, November 27, turn Did you write that one? I did. What was that? What was that right about? That song is a 100% true story about the fake ID that I had before I was 21. The name is right. It's it's from Powder Springs, Georgia. Like, it's my story of kind of looking back on those days. So, David Ashley Parker, is that a real person, though, that's reached out to you and been like, where's my ID, loser? Oh, it is. And so, the, the only difference is his name is actually Ashley David Parker. I just flipped it because David sang better, honestly. And, uh... His fiance at the time, uh, now wife, reached out to me on Facebook after the song came out. And she was like, I think that that's my fiance, and I think the name's backwards. And that wasn't really public knowledge yet, so I knew that it was probably legit. And the first time I met him was when I flew him up to Nashville to film the music video. You flew him up? Yeah, and we put him in the <laughs> video. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> awesome. It's pretty awesome. Do you still have the ID? I don't. It got taken up by a bouncer in Athens, Georgia. How did you originally get his ID? My my friend Michael found it on this the floor. He, he robbed a house. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. like, I've never told this story, but yeah. we broke in. I actually, yeah, it was crazy. So like, you didn't like, it wasn't like a friend of a friend and you knew him, like you found it. Oh, yeah. My buddy was leaving a bar in Athens, Georgia. Like, last call, walking out, it was on the floor of the bar. He picked it up, called me the next day and said, hey, this guy kind of looks like you, you know, so it'll work. Did he look like you? Were you insulted? You were like, I'm way better looking than that guy. Oh, man, at that point, I was like 135 pounds, soaking wet, buzzed head. Like, there were, anybody looked better than me at that point in my life. So, yeah, it looked good. All right, Travis Denning is here. They gave me a couple games to play with you. Okay. One of them I feel is unfair. So we're going to play that one first. All right, perfect. <laughs> we're going to do only that one then, yeah. Uh, it says, how well does Travis Denning know the Bobby Bones show? Okay. And oh. I, I think it's tough because you don't wake up early in the morning. Yeah, that I could think get awkward. you and I know each other outside yeah, of the show, yeah. but it, ooh, the rest of here, it's tough. Might be tough. Are you, drinking, are you drinking coffee this morning? I am, yeah. That, and my point, it's probably struggle to get up this early. It's probably not normal. It's. I mean, it's not, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you sleep last night ooh. knowing you were going to come up here, or were you kind of like, ooh, a little nervous or no? I, about about eleven fifteen, I was out cold. So you didn't care really. Just another night. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> whatever, Great. you know. Okay, here we go. Uh, five questions. Let's see what your grade is. I'm so scared. Let's do it. What state am I from? It's Arkansas. A, so, softball. There it is. Nice. Easy. Is right. Good. There's twenty percent so far of the A. All right. What's my dog's name? Travis. Puppy. Oh. You think he named his I, dog literally, I literally follow you on Instagram, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Mm -hmm. I'm going with Rufus. Oh, old Rufy. Uh. <laughs> no, his name is Stanley, after Stanley in the office. Ah, yeah. Okay. You won't get the rest of these either, then. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get Stanley. <laughs> no, there's no chance. These are, there's no chance of this one. <laughs> How many kids does Amy have? Uh, two. Oh, nice. Wow. You're now at 40%. And you adopted both? Yes. Or, yep. Yep. Bo ah. bo bonus? You know, there's no bonus. Oh, there's no credit. extra credit. Uh, <laughs> name the country. No it, extra credit. What? Yeah. It was in Africa, correct? Is it? Close. Okay. No, just kidding. Not close. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. Haiti. Our kids are from Haiti. What's the name of my last book? The, uh, the, the I mean, the Bobby Bones book, you know? <laughs> Duh. I mean, and if you didn't name it that, then I'm sorry. You should have consulted with me. That's great. Uh, it's called <laughs> Fail Until You Don't. Ah. And uh, you lose that one. Obviously, I haven't read that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm failing until I continue. Uh, one more one more here. What's Amy's husband's name? Oh, there's no way. Oh, Mr. Amy. Yeah. You know what? We'll take it. Yeah! yeah! Well, if I do my math, that's 105% correct. That is not. It is 60% uh, <laughs> with the gift of one question. Her husband's name is... Ben. Ben. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Ben. As in Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben's Rice. As in Ben Simmons, <laughs> who plays for the 76ers. Mm -hmm. He played for... You're, you're yeah. married to Ben Simmons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she dated him after the Kardashian finished. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 <laughs> finished. <laughs> All right, here's the game that I thought would be good for you. Okay, perfect. Travis, as an artist... You've torn travel all across the country, so I'm pretty sure you got to know the United States pretty well by now. Yes, sir. Been to pretty much all the states? Been to yeah. Alaska yet? I've not been to Alaska, and I actually have not been to Vermont or Hawaii, but other than that, I've been everywhere else. So we're going to give you a state. You just tell us the capital. Oh, okay, cool. 
You know what? Spot. I'll put Amy in this game too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That way you both are. Look, at, we look not smart. No, it's gonna yeah. be you both look great when you we nail all equally. Of these. Not no, look I mean smart. geography's not my thing. But Let, go ahead. Let's start with New Mexico. Can well, we discuss? No, you're playing against team. each other. Oh, I thought we, I thought we were working together. It's a. Uh, Hold on, you don't answer we'll, until. We'll, we'll rotate. Amy, okay. you go first. New Mexico. What's your answer? I'm gonna go with Albuquerque. Oh. Although a lovely town, that is not right. Do you know New Mexico? Santa Fe. Yeah, that's right. Oh shoot! Beautiful place. Travis. I, I was gonna say Albuquerque, so I'm glad that was wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. This I'm segment like, I always fly gets in trouble Albuquerque. with our listeners. I know. They're like, how do you not know my town? Mm-hmm. Uh, Travis, what's the state capital of uh, Mississippi? Uh, Jackson. Correct. Wow. Amy, Actually, what? I'm going to kill this game now that I think about it. Okay, yeah, we'll just, you, we'll just you roll see, you then, Smarty you Pants. You see more of the yeah. world than I do. <laughs> smarty Pants. Travis, what's capital of Alabama? Uh, Birmingham. Incorrect. Oh, is it Tuscaloosa? No. no. Not so smart, are we? Oh, it's... <laughs> wow. What do you got? Cal- that's uh, Montgomery. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, what's up? That's right. Sorry, Alabama. California. Sacramento. Nice. Illinois. Oh man, that's tough. But I'm going with Chicago. Mm. Not not accurate. Not accurate. Not shout not. out to all of our Chicago listeners right now, though, on Big ninety five five. But it is Springfield, Illinois. Oh god, there's a Springfield in every state. So yeah, that not makes an sense. excuse. Yeah. How about Wyoming? Cheyenne. Nice. How about Montana? See, this is tough <laughs> because I can see it. I can see it. What do you see? It's not Helena, is it? It is. Okay, but, you cool. but did you get do you get credit for that if you go it's not? <laughs> Wait. Oh, no, oh, no it's Helena. It. It's Helena. We'll yeah. do one more. Arkansas. Little Rock. Correct. Mm, let's do one more. Wisconsin. Oh. Is it Oh, that's tough. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it right now. Madison. That's right. Boom. Yeah. Oh, you got wow. it. You're much better at, at states than you are us. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, Travis Denning is here. Let's do Jason Aldean Drowns the Whiskey. If you want to call us, you can. 877-77-BOBBY. Guest hosting for Lunchbox today is Travis Denning. You can also watch on our Facebook page. He'll perform in, a, in just a few minutes. Oh, wow. Yay. Facebook.com slash Bobby Bones Show. All last hour, Travis Denning has been filling in for Lunchbox. Travis is a new artist. He's got a song in the top 20 right now, and the song is at number 16, just flying up the charts. So we had a lot of fun with you last hour. Hope you had fun. I had a blast. But now you're not our co-host anymore. You're actually an artist that's coming in to play a song. Do I get treated worse or better? Better. But perfect. Yeah, because... Oh <laughs> better. Yeah. <laughs> when you're just one of us, you're one of us. It's yeah. like, yeah, who cares? But now... There he is, Travis yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. I- my favorite, my new favorite artist, Travis Denning in studio. My new favorite guy. Um, what's up with those boots? They look pretty fancy cowboy boots. Yeah, these there. are uh, Lucchese's rattlesnakes. Uh, I always wanted a pair growing up, and I wear them all the time, like on stage and just around town at the gym. Sometimes, uh, if there's not a lot of people in there, <laughs> but I love them. Yeah. When you were growing up, who'd you listen to on the radio, and you were like, "Man, I love them." Like, who, who are the artists that kind of inspired you to get into music? Uh, I mean, for me, it was, I mean, early on, it was like ACDC and a lot of uh, a lot of Southern rock. So the Allman Brothers Band, Leonard Skinner, Marshall Tucker Band. And then the more that uh, that I drew to country music, you know, the older I got, uh, it was like John Anderson and Shenandoah. Uh, they weren't necessarily like on the radio at the time, but that's who I loved. Um, and then current artists were like, Jason Aldean, especially Keith Urban. I mean, as a guitar player, I mean, it's, it's hard not to have him as one of your heroes. The crazy thing about Travis is he is a really great guitar player. Would you know that, Eddie? Yeah, well, from our Christmas party. I could mm-hmm. tell. Do one, of the, do one of those things where you go... One of those little things? Yeah. <laughs> and he does that face, too. Mm, yeah. Where you, where you act like <laughs> it's like you can't... It's just like... <laughs> you're smashing a bug at the same time. Are you yeah. the guy that can take your guitar to party and they'd be like... Play Shenandoah, and you can play it? Yeah, I just normally, I don't want to be the guy at the party, though, but the, I usually can be, yeah. I used to be that guy in high school. If like, you love ACDC, did you ever play ACDC songs? Oh, I, I you, you could just ramble them off. I could play them right now. On a, could you do it a little bit on acoustic? Yes. We didn't go through this. I, I love ACDC. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's do, wow. I'll give you a tough one. I'll give you Back in Black. Do you know the guitar riff? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Can you sing it though, even though it's kind of a back in back? I'm sad. I bet you know. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that good. Awesome. Nailed wow. it. Okay. It shook me all night long. That one's easier to sing. Yeah, All right, give us a little bit of that, Buckley. She was a fast machine. She kept my motor clean. Was the best damn woman that I ever seen. She had a sitting <laughs> there. That's, that's the only uh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. Um, let's play your song here. Right, this perfect. is uh, Travis Denning in studio. He served his time one hour with us, guest hosting. He's got a top 20 song on the chart right now. With this song here called After a Few. Um, anything you want to say about this song? Uh, thank you very much. Here he is. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> saw you out with your friends and I know I should have left it alone when I caught you looking little smile little how you been little touch little reminisce it always starts off innocent but after a few drinks it's always the same thing we find ourselves lost the conversation at the bar then after a few Songs of kind that you hold Oh, we find ourselves leaning up against my car Should have stopped at one Say goodbye, giving up at two If we didn't want to wind up Falling into my bed Like we always do After a few Oh, after a few take it way too far yeah where there's too much to resist we always make it way too hard you to walk away after that third kiss or pretend that we'll be fine feel the sting in the morning light girl it happens every time after a few drinks it's always the same thing we find ourselves lost in conversation at the bar then after a few songs the kind that you hold on we find ourselves leaning up against my car just I take one Say goodbye giving up at two If we didn't want to wind up Falling into my bed Like we always do After a few Oh, oh yeah After a few Little smile, little how you been Little touch, little reminisce But we won't know how it ends after a few trains, it's always the same thing. We find ourselves lost in conversation at the bar. Then after a few songs, kind that you hold on. We find ourselves leaning up against my car. Should stop tag one. Say goodbye, giving up bad two. If we didn't want to wind up falling into my bed like we always do. After a few, oh, after a few, it's always after a few, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There he is, Travis Denning. Yeah. Thanks so much. Nice job, buddy. Uh, you can follow Travis on Instagram, Travis R. Denning, and we found out. The R stands for rent, as in pay your rent. With, rent, a, Z. with a Z, rents. Pay your rents. multiple rents. <laughs> no, pay, pay, pay all your rents. Uh, Travis R. Denning on Instagram. Well, we, we shall now conclude our time together. Did I pass? 
Well, it's over, so I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, we sent the uh, coin guy home after like 10 minutes yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not true. I'm just kidding. Uh, what'd you learn today, Travis? I learned that... Um, I need to brush up on my Bobby Bones Show trivia is mainly what I learned. True. That's yeah. good. That's, that's the main thing. Uh, let's bring in our, our parting gift. As always, we're bringing a parting gift for our host. And here he is with a birthday cake, and it's not oh, even his birthday. It's not my birthday. Oh, thanks so much. Bye. You know what? I have wanted a Rascal Flats farewell tour cake for years. <laughs> so uh, it's thank you so It's literally something we've had in the back room we've been trying to get rid of. And now our parting thank gift. You, thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. Blow out the candles. Make a wish. Okay. I made a wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wish is that I don't really have to keep this forever. My <laughs> wish for you. My wish for me. Uh, Travis, this? good to see you, bud. Thanks, man. Well, someone grab that cake yeah, from him. He's got a guitar and a cake, and he can't move. Yeah, it's guitar awkward cake. looking. He's stuck. Uh, Ken, folks, uh, but... Are you doing something with Sam? Are you going on tour? Yeah, I'm touring with Sam all summer. Yeah. Like one date or? Oh, okay. No, actually, this is going to be the full <laughs> Hold on, shut her down, Ray. Hold on, you can't hear the song. What is it? It's, it's the, you're doing all the dates? I'm doing all the dates. With Dustin Lynch now? With Dustin Lynch now. With Sam. One date with Al Dean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then with Sam. <laughs> all right. Uh, that Travis Denning, and here's Sam Hunt, Ken Folks, Bobby Bone Show. There he is, Travis Denning. Yeah. So, Lunchbox had his baby yesterday. It was born at 1.10 p.m., seven pounds, three ounces. Raymundo won the time bet because you bet it would be after noon. Yep. So how much money did you win? 50 bucks from Eddie. Hand it over. Did you pay him yet? Not yet. Okay. Uh, Eddie goes to the hospital to do an interview with Lunchbox, but this is pre-baby. Pre-baby. I went up, and he said there'd be plenty of times to just come on up. So I rolled right in, and the timing was crazy. Here you go. Lunchbox, well, it's go time. Uh, dude, like, you guys brought Chick-fil-A for lunch, and I was all just kind of goofing around. I walk in, the doctor's like, oh, it's time to push. It's time to push. Like, I thought I had hours, but no, 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 it's going. It's go time. What like, does that mean, time to push? Like, what do you do during this? Uh, I stand next to my wife, and I'm like, oh, you're amazing, you're amazing, you can do it. And I hold her hand, and then she says, don't touch me. And then I'm like, okay. And then she's like, hold my hand. I'm like, okay. And then she's like, don't touch me. <laughs> how, how long do you think this is supposed to take? I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, I thought it was going to take all day, so this could probably take 10 minutes. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I probably go to the bathroom before this comes out. <laughs> How long did it take from when you left he had it? We were there, I think we got there at about noon. Mm -hmm. That's about an hour later. So about an baby. hour later, the baby was out. Wow. We haven't revealed the gender yet. That'll be tomorrow. He wants to reveal it tomorrow. So we'll do the gender reveal tomorrow. Mm. And everything was good, though? It was it, it was crazy. Like it was just a regular hospital room. I thought that they had a delivery room. They would go somewhere else. And when I get there and do this interview, the nurses are all setting up the delivery table, which is just a table. It looks like a regular coffee table. And they're putting blankets over it. And they're like, "All right, time for you guys to leave because this baby's about to come out." I'm like, "Wow, I've never seen that." Because my babies were cesarean section, C-section. It was nothing like this. So lunch did have a second baby. Tomorrow we'll find out the gender. Yesterday, a big day for us, too, because we won the ACM for a national radio show. Yeah. Um, and then I got a, I don't think he'll mind me playing this, but Keith Urban called and left me a voicemail. Here, here it is. Because you got the personality of the year award, Bobby Bones, you're a legend from Arkansas. Personality of the year award, raging idiots. I'm lining up out the door. Oh, I can't. Right, anyway. Hey, Bobby. Congrats, man. Congrats on your ICM. Kick ass. It's Keith. Bye. There you go. At the end, it's Keith. like I've listened to it the whole time and not <laughs> who known who it this? was. I just am so confused. <laughs> who is this? It's Keith. Oh. <laughs> That's so cool, man. So, yeah, I was, I posted on Instagram yesterday. Very, um, Super cool. Just um, we'll, we'll never be lost on us how lucky we are to, to be up here and have you guys that are listening and supporting and actually making all that stuff happen. So appreciate that. So it was a good day yesterday. Yeah. Between Lunchbox having his baby, yeah. winning the ACM. Anything happened with you yesterday? Well, that. The ACM, no, nothing too, no, nothing exciting. Like, that big. was the most exciting part. Yeah. But small would be, yeah, my husband came home. He'd been out of town for a little bit, so that was good. Eddie? Um, I got to get a nap. That was a really good part. <laughs> you know, I took a nap yesterday, too. <laughs> Did you? How long? How was it? Um, it was long for me. I think it was about 45 minutes. That's great. Yeah, I woke up and went. It was like, wow, this is what they feel like <laughs> yeah, oh, every good day. Because I don't have to travel for, uh, we're going to go to Tampa and do Strawberry Fest. That's on a weekend mm -hmm. coming up on March 1st. I don't have to travel for American Idol for a few weeks. We've done all the stuff that's about to air. So I'm just like home. 
I, a little bit I have guilt. I was talking to my therapist about this. It's like I wake up and have like an hour and a half with nothing on my calendar. It's happened twice. And I don't know what to do. And then I feel guilty that I'm not doing something productive. What did oh, yeah. she say about that? Yeah. She's like, you just have to get used to that feeling. Yeah. Because you need to figure out a hobby. What was, was therapy yesterday? Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, normally you bring us like something that you've learned or mm. a breakthrough. What did I learn this week? I don't know. I mean, I guess she gave you that advice. No, but, but I mean, that was like a throwaway. I like when you give us, yeah. <laughs> you're like, I already no. knew that. <laughs> I like when you give us stuff. It's almost like you're doing, you're helping out our people. The people, for those that can't go to therapy, you do. And then mm. you share. <laughs> hmm. I told her that it's been going mm. so well. This thing you do to yourself. I haven't even said words yet. I know Amy. what you're going to say. Amy. No, I told her that it's been going so well with my girlfriend in this new relationship that as great as it's been, I don't say that it's been going great. I say it's been going pretty good. I said, because if it's so good that it can't be real. So what I go is, it's going real well. It's going good. When people ask, well, she's like, is it better than that? I'm like, yeah, but I don't, I can't even think of myself as being, because I think that if it's going so amazing that I, it's not real, but I, cause I want it to be real. And so I'm like, it feels real and it's going real good. And she's like, it's okay for you to say it's going wonderfully. And I'm like, but I don't, I can't say that. You've never done that. Yeah. Well, I've never even said it's been going great. Yeah. Um, I'm also trying to be really, um, I, like I'm very intentional for the first time ever in a relationship. You know, I go, this is what I'm, sh- short term and long term. This is what I'm looking for. This is how I feel. This is how I want to feel. This is how I hope you make you feel. So I'm trying to be very intentional. Maybe more so than is needed. But I just, for the, I've just learned a lot about myself, and so I'm trying to lay it all out there in this. That's good. So, that's it. Okay. That's all you have to say. You maybe you drug all that out of me, and then you have nothing. <laughs> no, to I'm say thinking back. about it. It was a different direction. I thought you were going to say because a lot of times when life is going well, you're like it's going too good. Like life is too good right now. Something bad is going to happen. Um, I do think that a, a bit, but that wasn't what that was about. Yeah. Now I see, and I'm I'm, I'm processing what you're saying, and I. Well, because what happens is whenever you get these these love feelings or emotions, it's chemicals in your brain and it's a bit of a fog and it's not real because what you're doing is feeling these chemicals that don't last forever. And so you can be blinded by this rush of this is so amazing. And I'm going, well, if it feels that amazing, I don't want to have those chem. I'm trying to fight through those chemicals mm. and get to the real part of it. And so I don't want it to feel so great that it feels like it could be chemicals in my brain, these these hormones what i'm doing is going nope not that this is real so it's not that so i'm trying to talk it down so are you going to take her advice and say it's okay to feel that it's wonderful why would i take her advice <laughs> well, I mean, you're, she's it's, just the therapist her to do. Just, um I, I don't i don't walk out of the room and go oh, i'm gonna now change up my style but mm-hmm. it's mostly like to reflect it's a mirror that, that whole thing's a mirror back is there any me. chance that you would just let things happen to you like, what, do, what do you mean? Kind of like this whole relationship. Is there any chance that you can maybe just let it you happen? You mean sit back and enjoy the ride? I, I yeah. am a bit, more so than I ever but have. But after but that explanation, it sounds like you're not because you broke it is, down like is, an equation. This is his version of it. Because sitting back and relaxing and enjoying the ride would be like you're not trying to fight off chemicals in your brain right. that you cannot help if they're released or not. But don't you understand that I think this is so real that I don't want to be blinded by whatever fog? Yes. Yes, and that's smart. Like it's a good thing. It's smart, and really, like, I think that most people should probably go through a relationship like that, but I don't think anyone's ever gone through a relationship like she that. She says the same thing. <laughs> She's like, you know, I don't have people that come in and do data analytics right. on feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, but that's what I do. Like, I'm trying to look ahead, and I see a future here, and I don't want to be so blinded by the immediate future that I can't see past that. And she's like, sometimes you just have to feel a little bit, so, like, yeah. find a middle ground. Do you talk to Caitlin about your therapy sessions? Mm, sometimes. It's just a kind of weird thing to be like, just love therapy. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's debrief. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. You know, it's, but it's every- or she may ask. She may know you're at therapy. And That's what happens like, mostly. She may just say, hey, what y'all she, talk about? She's like, how's therapy? And I go, fine. So anyway, <laughs> how was your day? But what she gets irritated by a little bit is when she finds out things about our relationship on this show oh, that, I, that yeah. I don't say to her. Mm. But I'm like, I'm just talking to my friends. Yeah. You know, you, I don't know stuff that it's you like tell your friends. It's like she's dropping. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that was a deal. Okay, cool. Let's play Old Dominion, One Man Band, Bobby Bone Show. If you guys want to hop on, you can. 877-77-BOBBY. 877-77-BOBBY. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you for hanging out with us. TMZ uh, 
put the story this morning on the internet. Greg Robinson, who made a ton of money playing in the NFL, like millions and millions and millions of dollars, he was busted with 156.9 pounds of marijuana in his car, facing up to 20 years in prison. Isn't that crazy? Because, again, the guy was the number two overall pick in the 24, 2014 NFL draft, is worth millions and millions of dollars, and was basically hustling in some weed a lot, but yeah. but when you have that much He's money, doing the business like of oh, I didn't know was he taking it to the house or selling it with that much with that you much think. you're oh, selling I it. I don't know how much that is. 157 pounds. Pounds. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, that's a me. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of that's parties. a crazy party. Yeah, he was uh, in a 2020 Chevy Tahoe, mm. but. Does, I, I just wonder, does he even have that money? And yeah. why, if he's running the business, does he not have somebody else doing it? Mm. Do you see the story? Yeah, it's crazy. You, you wonder, just like you see these people, these athletes that make a lot of money, you're like, they don't need to do anything like that. But well, yeah. it happens. I don't know. I just feel like sometimes they, if they were already involved in it, it's hard to, to get out. But you can move up the ranks. That's true. And if you I have that much saying. money, yeah. you have somebody else drive it in. Yeah. That's my only thing. So I saw that. I Maybe. saw... Chris Pratt was talking about, and, and I never related to Chris Pratt so much in my life. Here's Chris Pratt on Ellen talking about spray tans. I feel sexy when... When I get the spray tan. <laughs> <laughs> That's you totally go. you. Is that when you feel your most sexy? No, mostly. <laughs> mine's when I'm I, I, I'm going to go to weight. If I'm at like 159... <laughs> and tan, though. Add, it's like bonus. I don't know. Tan, sometimes I don't, it, it doesn't, I, I do it so I don't get next to Luke, Brian, or yeah. Ryan on American Idol, and they are really dark, and I'm pasty, pasty poly. Um, but I like to be like 159, and I see it on the scale, and I, it just makes me feel good. <laughs> I'm trying to get back there right now. I got like 10 days to kind of get myself down to that, that weight. But that spray tan really does make you look fit, huh? Yeah, if you can't Like, it's not it, fair for it. a lot of you, like, pale skin guys. White guys, yeah, like no, you're lucky. dark, like yeah. really, I can be like really like fat and I can see a little bit of my abs because of my Eddie, skin color. It. Seriously, it does, because I mean, of my he, skin color. He's on to something. Eddie, stop yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg reportedly gets his armpits blow dried before speeches. No, he does not. Why is that weird? Okay, no. I mean, well, I guess. Why, do, I why guess don't it, you think it's weird? Well, if, if you he, sweat if a lot nervous? and you have to go talk in front of people. Well, what? Why don't you just what? put a towel under there? But what's, the, you, what's the difference? I don't know. It just seems weird. But I guess he has, if he has a person that can do that, great. CEO Mark Zuckerberg's armpits are blow drying before <laughs> speeches. He is, is super sweaty, though. Oh. Like he's a really sweaty guy. And so Mark Zuckerberg, who became famous for his perspiration during a televised 2010 interview, quote, is consumed by his public image. The 35-year-old wants to look cool and dry instead of sweaty and nervous, which makes sense. He Probably me, self-conscious about it, too. Yeah, now. I would think so. If you sweat a lot, you probably... What is your weirdest grooming thing that you do? Oh, I would... <laughs> Come I'll, on, I'll tell you mine. Yeah. My facial hair gets gray right about my sideburns. So right where there's like... It's a, it's like a, you cross the equator and my facial hair turns gray on my sideburns. Mm. And so before I'll go on TV, they'll take a toothbrush and brush that little part of my sideburn. Oh, wow. With like brown spray. And again, not something I can control. I'm not embarrassed of it. And it's temporary, just washes right out. Yeah, washes right out. And I can also shave my sideburn out because it's not mm. in my hair. My hair is not gray, but I do have it gets a re it goes brown, 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 gray. Yeah. So I have to color that in. So that's probably for me. You something new I started doing was Hillary Duff on Instagram taught me how to contour my nose. So I just started doing that the last few weeks. Have you noticed? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no, can't. My tell. nose doesn't look Slimmer? Hillary Duff has a new song out that's really good, though. Really? Oh, really? Oh, your Caitlyn show it to you? No, it's oh. not, it's a Third Eye Blind uh, cover. Her and her husband, who's a, a pop singer guy yeah. at EDM World, Matthew Combe, I think is his name, they, they did a cover of Third Eye Blind, Never Let You Go. And so, again, I didn't tell anybody with enough time to put a clip in. Let's see if I can find it on my phone. But, um, you know, never let you go. Yeah. See if you find Third Eye Blind version, Ray. But it's really good. I mean, it's a it's kind of a dancey version. But Hillary Duff has music. And then I was getting a haircut yesterday, and I heard it in there. Here you go. This is for my phone. <laughs> go. 
Remember that song? Yeah, yeah. That, is, that sounds awesome. He sings in it too. Morgan, number two, do you know this song? No, I haven't heard it. No, do you know the original version? I don't know. I'd have to hear it first. Ray, do you have third eye blind version? There we yeah, go. This is it. Yeah. Man, I still love Third Eye Blind. Is every good reason? Nothing, Morgan? Yeah, no, I do, do know it, yeah. Turn what it year up, is this? <laughs> Turn it up. She's sneaky and smoked down. 2001, maybe? Yeah, it's one of their later songs. <laughs> yeah, at the end. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Amy's dad is on her Four Things podcast. Is he on the episode now when it came out today? Yeah, the one that came out today. He's in the intro with me, and he it's his, first, it's his podcast debut. And the thing with him is it's been about a year and a half since he had throat surgery, so he hasn't felt com- – I've invited him on before, but he has turned me down because he didn't feel comfortable talking yet, and now he's getting to a place where he feels like he can talk. Yeah, Amy's dad had throat cancer kind of out of nowhere. Yeah. You thought was- he was just going in for something small and then – here we are a year and a half later. Yeah. And no, here's the clip. Number one is Stevenson and Sassira. Number two is Hope, and Hope keeps me going because every day I, I, I have another challenge, but Hope keeps me going. So he's th- sharing the four things he's grateful for. The first two were your kids. Yeah. And then, yeah. And well, Hope. Good. Check out Amy's podcast. It's called Four Things with Amy Brown. All right. And then one final story Bieber is still defending the claim he can beat up Tom Cruise in a fight. <laughs> Okay. This I would be he, a good pay per view. Yeah. yeah. Tom Cruise, though, right, a lot older and shorter. Yeah. But that guy's probably hardcore as much as he trains for his movies and learns how to fight and fly jets. Mission and- Impossibles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Who would you bet to win that? Justin Bieber or Tom Cruise? I think I'd go with Tom Cruise if I were betting money on it. You'd probably make money on that bet. Amy? I, I guess I'm going to go with Bieber. I think he's. Youth vote? Yeah. And he's getting that NAD treatment in AB or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'll just typically, I'll pick Bieber. Eddie? Oh, I go Bieber, man. Remember that Calvin Klein ad he did when he was all ripped? But being ripped doesn't mean you can fight. I don't know. Conor McGregor's pretty ripped. Why does Bieber keep doing these hockey things on Instagram? I don't follow him. Oh, you don't? Uh-uh. Oh. I, he keeps, like, doing these things. And so, to me, well, at least what I'm seeing him do, he seems agile. Oh, I'm sure he's young and confused. I'm just saying Tom Cruise <laughs> has been trained in a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I do have a a, a Drew hoodie, though, now. One of oh, you got it? Oh, you got one? Yeah, Caitlin brought me one. Cool. Nice. I haven't, I haven't really worn it yet. That's like, I mean, like one of the few. Mm. Uh, why, why aren't you wearing it? Are you kind of, like, worried that... No, I've had guests in every day okay, okay. this week so far for the most part. What, worried about what? I don't well, care. people think, like, oh, look at this guy trying to be all, like, Bieber. You were originally. I did wear it out this weekend because we, I went and had lunch with a couple friends, and a girl who was, like, 19 was like, <laughs> love the hoodie. <laughs> and here I am, 39. <laughs> and I'm like, it's funny. Like, hey, th- thank, you, thank you very much. For some hey, reason, I'm talking. Thanks, like, yo. It's lit, huh? <laughs> and then Fire. Uh, she's like, you listen to the new album? And I would. Stop it. She didn't say that. <laughs> she did. <laughs> And I had because of Caitlin, and I was like, "Yeah." And she was like, "What's your favorite song?" And I was like, "Well, probably Intentions or the one with Little Dicky." <laughs> no, or, no, Yummy. Stay away from Yummy. Or, well, Yummy. That's what that's what all the posers <laughs> yeah, right, like. Right. All the, yeah, all the posers like Yummy. Is- it's dope, though. It is. <laughs> I'll probably wear it next week. All right, all right. Uh, you guys can watch the show live on our Facebook page, facebookcom slash Show. Here's Garth Brooks, Blake Shelton, Dive Bar. Here you go. They spent a bunch of money and did a study, and the study says that beer goggles are real. Now, I don't know what it's like to be drunk. I would like to know what it's like to be drunk. But do we need a study, Eddie, to prove that beer goggles are real? Absolutely not. I'll tell you right now, beer goggles are real. Well, we have it in a study, though, so you don't have to tell us anymore. (laughs) By experience, I know that it's real. Describe to me what it's like to be 
beer goggled. So it's usually it's usually used in kind of the way of uh, you think a girl that is not really that attractive is really attractive when you're drunk. Yeah, or a guy. Right. Okay. Well, I'm speaking from my my point of view. Uh, you start with the more you drink, Bones, the more fuzzier things get. It's kind of like when you're walking the beach, you know, and you see someone from far away, like, oh, okay, and then they get close, uh, and like, oh no, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Morgan it number is. two, you're kind of living it right now. Are beer goggles a thing for girls? Yes, I, I think it goes both ways. I mean, there's been times where I'll I'll think a guy's attractive when I'm out drinking at a bar. I'll be like, next day, I'll be like, mm, maybe not my best <laughs> thought, I guess. Or that he was more fun than he actually yeah, was. Yeah, personality too is a thing. You just kind of highlight them and like you put them on this pedestal and then the next day you're like, where did that pedestal come from? Yeah. It's real, man. You're impaired. Well, I wonder, because I have a bunch of guy friends that have dealt with this, been like, man, I made out with a girl, hooked up with a girl, and she wasn't as hot when I wasn't drunk. But I've never heard it from the girl side. And so how do you find out? Do you go to Instagram? Do you, like, see them? Yeah, I mean, you, you get their phone number and stuff, and there'll be times, like, I'll, you know, flirt with a guy at a bar, and then I'll go on a date with him, and I'll be like, oof. Maybe she didn't got on that date. Because <laughs> you just don't. <laughs> you think so highly of them when you're drinking. And then you just realize a lot of things when you're sober. <laughs> Do you ever wonder how many times you've been beer goggled? Because I wonder oh, that. Wow. Like how many girls have I been out with that thought I was way hotter? Oh, because they then, had had a drink or two? Yeah, and then I'm with them and they're like, what Morgan said. They're like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> like that's where my mind goes. Like how many girls went out with me and then, and then been like, oh, I did, he's not what I thought he was. I thought he was like Ryan Gosling, but he's more like Clay Aiken. Like, <laughs> oh, man. A new study finally proved that beer goggles do exist. The researchers found that drunk people don't really judge whether someone's attractive to them or not, so they give attention to people they may, may not be interested in when they're sober, mm. which is what you've all thought. Yes. But we had to spend money and have researchers <laughs> at Edge Hill University. They monitored people at a bar and found that sober people get distracted by attractive faces, but drunk people get distracted by... All faces. <laughs> That's funny. So it's possible that when you're drunk, you give attention to someone you may not give attention to when you're sober because you're not even processing whether they look good to you or not, really. It's mostly how they make you feel. I was also reading a story, not the same about drinking, but I was reading a story about this a disease where you can't remember people's faces, period. Mm. Like, the we see someone's face... And we, I can remember, that's Amy's face, Eddie's right. face. Or if I don't know your name, I can still remember seeing that face. But there are some people who have a disease, they can't remember anyone's face, even people they're close to. So they have no facial remembering at all. Can you imagine that people they probably think you're rude for not remembering them. Like, did I see you all the time? You don't remember me? Imagine like a brother or sister or husband or wife. Yeah, that's right. hard. Every time you see them. Huh? So they have to remember through like voice texture, mm. like listening, but they never, they never recognize the face again which is just wild to me. Uh, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Bobby Bones Show. We'd love to hang with you guys. Uh, all you have to do is go watch the show over there. We're, we're live for most of the morning, so check it out.